Hello everyone and welcome back to the World Explorer podcast. This is the podcast where every week we take a random prompt and build an entire world around it. My name is Casey and as always I'm joined with Isaac. Hello there. So today we are world building a corrupted forest. I know we already world built a forest recently but I wanted to build another one because I got the idea um of uh world building a f- yeah, like sort of an evil uh aesthetic forest a forest with uh trees that come uh, to life um swamp monsters maybe i imagine a green glowing uh water um th- that's maybe magically uh Toxified everything. Yes, it's like a radiated radiation. magic one. You could say it's radiation, but radiation's less fun than magic because radiation comes with scientific rules and everything. And magic, <laughs> we get to make our own rules. That's true. I guess that's a valid point. So you want a forest with magically radiated water? Pretty much. And slime yeah. monsters and moving trees. Yes but with an evil aesthetic. Yes, so the trees get evil glowing faces on them. Like Snow White? I have not seen Snow White in many, many, many years, so I don't remember them. Well, there's a scene where she's running through the forest and all the trees suddenly have like creepy faces that glow at her. I guess uh, that's- Snow White's the first one to do it, but every single cartoon has copied off of Snow White when a kid is running through a dark forest and they're scared and the trees seem to have faces on them. It's a classic. I guess that's what we're going for. Yes. It's like Snow White. Except except they're actual creepy faces and not like deers and bunnies that come out of the forest. Oh, yeah. Th- these are actual living <laughs> trees. Um, and so, in the sense that they move, they talk... Do they eat people? I like to say they go yar yar yar. They, they make weird monster sounds. And they, uh. I don't know if they would eat people, though. Like. They're. I, so, I like going back to, like, the radiated water con magically radiated water concept. I kind of like the idea of, like, that that's being the thing that's feeding the entire forest yes. and it's the water that's causing these things to come to life yes. so they probably like ooze a really gross green sap from their mouths yes as they gummy talk at you exactly what i'm thinking and i yeah. imagine it's more than just like the trees a lot of stuff in this forest would be affected by this water causing everything to become sort of corrupted and uh come to life and uh Maybe we could say it's... But really bright and neon. Yes. Maybe we could say that this water essentially acts as a life-giving water, but uh, the life it gives, it's not something that you... It's more like a, I guess, undead, unnatural, unnatural undead water, like... You won't like this if you were to try and heal someone with this kind of water uh, from some sort of a- illness, it would more turn them into a zombie like creature than it would heal them. Like they'd be alive. It gives them they life, just... but not a soul. Pretty much. Okay. So it kind of Frankensteins them? Yes, but I. I don't know. I don't think that the book ever confirmed this, but I would imagine Frankenstein's monster did have a soul. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm referring movie Frankenstein, not book Frankenstein. Oh, I haven't seen the movie. I I haven't either, but he's very... It's a bit different. Um, From what I gather, it seems pretty different in the fact that they call him Frankenstein. Um, it's, So it's... So we have... I'm trying to think... How, where I want to go. So I assume this also affects like animals. Like it used to have really cute animals like squirrels and birds and foxes and bears and now they've all these creatures they're kind of just oozing green ooze. Yes. Uh, and probably have really weird neon eyes. Yes. And look possessed because they are. Yes. 
and uh don't drink the water no don't drink the water and maybe i'm wondering if we want to go this route we want to make it so that the uh water doesn't just give them like green eyes but it also might somewhat disfigure them like melts there's like wrinkly skin and like melted faces and uh maybe some of like that wasn't what i was what thinking but i do here? also like that idea i was thinking more along the lines of uh like a beak for a bird might suddenly become jagged almost like teeth and uh and it might start molting a little bit and like and um their backs might be like you know, some of the animals backs might be like crooked and you can see like their spine almost like stretching out from that something it's sort of like slightly horrific looking images like so someone took a normal like a picture of a bear uh and then crumpled up the piece of paper and then flattened it back out and now it's weird kind of yeah i guess that's a good way to describe it or maybe a sculpture, I should say. They've just taken the sculpture and they've poked it in strange spots, and now you've yes. got these deformed creatures running around. Yes. You just feel like... Are you in a horror mood or something today? Um... I guess I am. I don't know, I just... This is really gross. I... I just thought... Corrupted forest with gr glowing ooze and corrupted trees and I'm like yeah that sounds like a good starting point for a world so out of curiosity is how contagious is this is this you have to drink the water or is this you touch the water and you're contaminated is this like if one of this bear attacks you and bites you you get infected like what's, what's I the think infection level? if you were to touch the water and like quickly rinse it off or something you'd be fine uh, if you drink it, you're not fine. Um, but maybe it's enough to where if you were to bathe in it, you would not be fine. Uh, if you were to be, I don't know. If I guess maybe if uh, one of these monsters were to attack you and bite you, and some of their ooze got into your bloodstream, you would probably not be fine. Or maybe it, you would be just mildly affected i don't know i don't know how you might need a certain amount before it actually starts taking effect i mean like is it curable is there a point where you can get a cure before it's too late type thing like if you get rabies you can get shots as long as you catch it soon enough and you'll be okay yeah um is it like that i think that maybe there should be a cure we just gotta figure out what that cure is probably something else in the forest like something that's able to resist it and live with it but without Ooh, i like that idea that is a very good idea um so something not neon green so <laughs> what's the opposite of neon green with a rose <laughs> um that sounds like another form of death <laughs> but it would be the cure uh, death is the cure of all things yes uh but, I mean, that's another idea, though, is that this forest can have two contradicting, like, really dark stuff, but when you combine the two, it's fine. Like, it's harmless. Like, they antidote each other. So, like, you could have a wither rose or, like, a, I guess, a flower plant or even another water type that's, like, a black death thing that maybe causes almost instant death or really... It's it's deadly. Uh, and But that same substance, if paired with the green ooze, makes it drinkable. And you'd be okay. I like that idea. Now you've got a situation where if the antidote is not very carefully measured or prepared properly, it could have the uh, chance of either worsening the patient's condition or instantly killing them. Yeah. And we all love the, the panicked at trying to cure a poison moment with people as they struggle trying to figure it out and you have people yelling like they're dying they're dying and they're saying they're like look if i don't measure this correctly we're all dead okay so just shut up and let me do this <laughs> yeah i it's, i like this idea now we have to come up with a name for this uh plant or even an idea of like what is the plant like is it a flower is it berries is it uh a fern 
Um, it has. I don't know. I'm trying to think of like something that grows well. I mean, it could even be like a lily pad or something like that that actually grows in the water itself. So you then also have the added element to get it. You have to like traverse the waters and try to get this lily pad without actually falling into the liquid. Okay, so I'm just trying to think as to like why it grows in the ooze in particular. Like it resists it, Ooh. but is there also something about the ooze that attracts it so that it's so that it grows in the pond? It could be its food source. Or it could also be that this that forest sounds... had these uh, lily pads to begin with, and then the forest became corrupted, and so now just, uh, all the water sources are corrupted. But the uh, plant, uh, but this plant managed to resist it, and continues to grow in the ooze. Yeah, that that also works. But there's also always that idea of antidotes. The one of the reasons, like, uh, so like uh, you make antidotes out of the poison. Yeah. So you need the poison to make an antidote. So wouldn't it make sense that the plant that is the antidote to this poison grows out of it? Yeah, but wasn't the idea to take the poison and mash it with this plant? Yeah. So you're already getting your an getting the poison in the antidote by mashing it with, because the idea is they cancel each other out. Yeah, I think that that's the point. Is that the antidote's just supposed to be an antidote? But you can also say you're stuck in this forest. You need to drink something. You're out of water. All you've got is this ooze. You can mix the lily pad in with the ooze and make a drinkable water that way. But if you were just to have the lily pad or just have the ooze, both would kill you. This is a very risky beverage. Dehydration is no joke. I mean, but fair I enough. agree. I don't like the idea. I, I'd probably uh, rather if I risk had to hydration. Choose between dehydration. Yeah, it's like I have to choose between dying of dehydration or risking turning into a mindless zombie like a creature that attacks everything in sight. I'd probably just let myself die via dehydration. Yeah. Um, personally, yeah, so would I. Um, then again, we could also say that maybe this uh drink tastes super good, and so it's become a delicacy, uh, <laughs> to some people. Like, high risk, it's like, it's like uh, people who eat puffer yeah, fish, it's exactly yep. like puffer fish, where you might die if you eat it. But if prepared properly, you'll be fine. It's just kind of risky. And now you have people who actually go into this dark, deadly forest just to gather the ooze and lily pads to make <laughs> this drink. I mean, I imagine Which they're growing like... the lily pads. That's true, but they still have to get, like, yeah. the ooze. So now you have a story of... I don't know, some high society place and you've got a high society chef sending their intern into the very deadly <laughs> forest to go get ingredients <laughs> for him so he can give this food to his very high paying clients uh, and then you also have another element where something goes horribly wrong and he mixes it wrong and he's poisoned all of these elites Ooh. and they've all died and now you've got that going, and somehow he tries to blame the intern, and so now the intern's just like, well, okay, I guess I'm gonna go live in the forest now. <laughs> to escape jail. Yeah. It's a multi I, I like story. this. I like this story potential. Uh, where else do we want to go with this world? How did the ooze get there to begin with? Because it's a corrupted forest, like, it wasn't mm -hmm. always there. Was there some sort of grand magical event? Was there a witch? Was there a dark overlord that um, cast some sort of spell? Or there, was there some sort of battle where this was spilled? Um, what would cause the ooze question. to show up? I guess, like, what reason would someone have to curse a forest? Um... Is it trapping people? So are people trapped inside the forest? Like, is it supposed to act as a wall between two kingdoms? So you had, like, two areas that were fighting against each other so much, and then you have a 
witch or wizard or whatever magical sorcerer person who was sick of the fighting and decided the best way to solve it was just to separate them permanently via a very deadly oozy forest. And that could explain why it doesn't keep spreading, why it stays put, because it's supposed to be more of a wall than an actual, like, corruption. Yeah. I think that could work. Um, I also ideas. thought about, instead of wizards, uh, for some reason my mind went to dragons. Dragons as the peacekeepers. So dragons corrupting the forest to keep yes. the peace? This just sounds like, you know, the the classic fairy tale movie tropes where they do the intro to why things are the way they are, and it's, you open a book and it becomes like this 3D animation thing, and now you just have, they open the book and it's these dragons corrupting this forest to separate two warring people. Yes. And then you flash into some weird modern time <laughs> cities <laughs> with like weird magic effects and stuff drinking their, their poisonous drinks. I mean, I wasn't thinking modern times and modern cities, but if you want to go that route... <laughs> I just... It, <laughs> this feels like a darker version of one of Disney's cheesy Disney Channel movies. Nah, the, we, we've already just, put more effort into this one world than they have entire shows, so... <laughs> Uh, I don't know. This gives me, like, really strong Descendants vibes. I haven't seen for that. For whatever reason. I don't know why. It's actually not bad. I kind of like the movies. Oh. I will add them to my so, list yeah, of I things like to watch. Movies. Yeah. It's an interesting time. Um, but it's giving it's giving that vibes. And that's it's a compliment, I think. But, like dark corruption separating societies and yeah what about so we have these corrupted animals is there anything like specific to the corruption animal wise living there so like an animal that's purely corruption not just uh an originally was one thing but got corrupted um i have an idea but it is also kind of originally was something that got corrupted but it's really the idea of something like that's sort of like an amalgamation of multiple elements from the force. So we've got uh, rocks thrown in there with maybe some logs and some plants all cobbled together to create maybe like a... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. A four-legged... Imagine like a four-legged nature dog dinosaur crossbreed that those are a selection of words that you've put together yeah a deformed stegosaurus crossed with a dog crossed with nature and some green news oh yeah and it just wanders the forest hunting like what is yes. so do these do these creatures I assume they get like the most of their substance from the water, but are they like how hostile are these things? Very. Okay. Because Just everything's all, hostile, like, everything's trying to kill you. Yes. That's what the ooze does. So what keeps the trees from like leaving the forest or spreading? Because they can move, right? Um yes. Or are they still but maybe rooted? They, maybe they need Maybe they need to stay in the forest because they need to keep drinking the ooze. Yeah. So the trees need a more consistent supply than the animals do. So an animal could sneak out every now and then they need to be taken out, but the trees, yeah. they won't want... They, they've got but a set have, limit before they'll die. I imagine the trees are moving pretty slowly as well. And yeah. so the animals have time to actually leave before they're dehydrated enough or whatever where they need to actually come back and drink more. Yeah. That's... Yeah, that would make sense. So, I mean... So are all the trees like this? Or are there just certain ones that happen to get corrupted? I think there will just be certain ones that, have to, that end up getting corrupted because if all of the trees were like that, I think it'd be a bit much and no one could yeah. enter the forest without immediately dying. I think so, all of them are emitting the ooze and, like, have that 
weird greenish texture and really gross to touch type thing but some of them just it gets activated and it's kind of random how it gets activated yeah you never know which tree is going to suddenly turn into a monster and try to kill you yes it's a real horror movie here I mean, it's unlikely that you're going to run into one that just sort of spontaneously uh, comes, comes to life, to life. and <laughs> starts trying to attack you. But that is such a thing it's... someone would do for a TV yes. show or movie. 100%. They gotta get that jump scare out of, out of you. Especially if the audience doesn't know that the tree trees do that. Yeah, just don't... It just maybe don't uh, try and sleep in the forest, because now you're staying in one spot for an extended period of time... And you're unconscious, and the longer you stay in one spot, the more likely you are to have any one of those trees spontaneously t uh, come to life and attack you. Yeah, or crawl their way towards you. Yes, or that. This is not a place to go camping. But if someone wanted to live in the forest or needed to stay there overnight for something, how would they survive that? Um... Hope for the best. Great. Uh, but there's got... I don't know. I'm just trying to think if there's... Because usually in forests like this for stories, there's always that one person who knows how to survive it. And can... They've got, like, their little secrets that they share with their protege. Okay. So you got that one hermit who's living in the forest who is um, probably living in a either in a uh, cave or a non-corrupted tree. Something that's just non-corruptible. I guess the stone uh, in the cave would make sense. And then have to be, like, fully encased in stone. You have to keep in mind those forest monsters are also partially made of stone. They're made of all... Mm -hmm. just an amalgamation of all the different forest elements. Yeah, but that's, like, little pieces of stone. It's not like the stone cave is gonna come to life and just crush you. True. Yeah, the, the stone cave would be fine. So, like... Living in a stone cave, that's good. Um, living, in, like, if you're going to have something made of wood, it can't be rooted or have any way of, like, absorbing the uh, ooze. So, a wooden door is fine. Uh, it's not going to come to life. And then, if you want the ooze, you want to get something to drink, you drink the ooze, but you mix it with the lily pads. So, what do you uh, do for food? Eat lily pads. Uh, I don't know. That kills uh, you. <laughs> yeah, eat lily pads mixed with ooze. Um, no, that's a, that's just the drink. That yeah, but make. it's it's solid enough. I don't know. We gotta come up with a food source. Um, maybe there's a way of purifying true, like... meat if you're hunting. Maybe it could work something like uh, blood and bacteria, like we do with nor like when we cook normal. Uh, animals where if you cook them, they're fine. And maybe that process like, uh, can remove the ooze. Talk, you talked about wanting all of this to be more magical and stuff. So there's oh, this right. magic element that we can do away um, <laughs> So, uh, hmm. So magic. could just be like a purification spell or something as well, maybe. It can't it yeah, the hermit could just be a wizard. The... We could say that. The hermit yeah, is just a wizard can't... that knows magic and is able to even purify the ooze and turn it into water uh, with a spell. I don't think he should be able to touch, like, the ooze itself, but I think he can repel the ooze. Magic so gloves. So he still has to... I'm gonna ignore that. So he can still... <laughs> Like, uh, he still has to make the drink for water, because he can't- all he can do is repel ooze, but it means when he kills an animal and wants to cook it, he has the magic ability to just kick the ooze out of the animal so that way he can eat it. But he can't save a corrupted creature, because at that point they're kind of just dead already. Yeah. If he removes the ooze, it kind of just kills them. Because right now that's the only thing keeping them animated. So... If he can just remove the ooze, like, let's say that there's somebody who is dying, who's been affected by the ooze, but isn't fully corrupted or anything yet, couldn't he just use a spell to cure someone? 
Because I feel like that should that should work. Uh, they might be weak. They might need to recover, and it might take a few days, but they'll be fine. Without that the could lily be, pad, there could just be a really bad side effect to using magic on a living creature. Like, he uses it on animals he's killed to get rid of the ooze, or on plants and stuff, to so he can eat the fruit and things. But when you do it on something, someone that's living, it could have a really negative effect. It could have a mental... It could affect it, like, the mentally. It could just have a really bad side effect, so he's very... Uh, kind of against using it. We could go with, the, uh, with an idea that uh, maybe the source of magic comes from one's heart or mind heart either heart and or mind go that route and they you are able to output magic from an individual but if you try and reverse it and force magic into someone that automatically enters either their heart or mind and that can damage them like um like the current's only meant to flow one way and when you try and reverse that it, it uh it's not good. It's bad, bad juju. So when this person, when this wizard is inserting magic to try to remove the ooze, instead of it, like, attacking the ooze, it attacks, like, their heart and their core and where their magic is stored? Um, no, it, it like, that wasn't the idea. The idea was it's attacking the ooze and it's removing the ooze, but in the process, it's, it also enters the creature and just, as a byproduct, affects the heart and mind. Okay. Yeah, I guess that would make more sense. It just, it, the magic, I guess, can't really be targeted in the sense, it can't be uh, pinpointed. Yeah. It, it's not a precise spell, it just attacks all of you. So if someone's nearly gone, then yeah, you could use the magic and dispel, because it might be the only chance you have to save a person. But that's going to have extremely negative effects, it's going to very much weaken this person, it might break them mentally. I don't know. Like that's you got some fun story element possibilities there. You yeah. can do whatever you want to this poor person that you've just magicked cured who just got poisoned and then got cured only to be now like disabled in some way and has to deal with that. Yeah. But... While also living in a forest that's constantly trying to kill him. Possibly after they'd accidentally poisoned like twelve elites. Who knows? It's thing is this spell is uh, like if you want to weaponize it you can have like li you can have magic be you learn literally any spell and that it can be used on an individual and it has the potential to kill them like this is not a, like a zap a zap you dead spell it's just any spell will work with this system which makes me think that magic has to be like a very rare thing in this type of world like only yes. a few people can harness it that's why there's only one it's a gift new, from one the random... dragons yeah, this is why only one random dude is living in the forest. I, so what happened to the dragons after they corrupted the forest? Um, so also, I'm imagining- Also, do we want a corrupted dragon accidentally? Ooh, that is interesting. So I'm imagining that the magic is something that is learned, and it's like an ancient art that uh, is lost to time, or maybe like you, you learn it from the dragons, but the dragons aren't around anymore. They didn't want to give their power to the humans because they saw the humans were trying to kill each other and they're like, no, we don't want to give you the the ability to just instantly kill each other. Uh, so they w stopped teaching humans magic, they divided the lands, and then they went into hiding. And uh, this one hermit is one of the few people who still knows how to use magic and it's maybe taught how by the dragons in which case the dragons may be living somewhere either in the forest or somewhere beyond the forest and he's going in, uh, to them uh, maybe for more lessons or maybe they're just friends and then your protagonist meets the hermit who introduces them to the dragons and then maybe the protagonist somehow causes the dragons to become corrupted and then you've got your rampaging a uh, dragon that's about to fly off and burn down cities, or maybe even spread more ooze onto cities. Like, oh, they, you can this get person, some though, serious like, conflict. If we're, the amount of terrible things that we have come up with for this one <laughs> poor person to go through, like, it, this person started off just wanting to become a chef. 
That's it. They just wanted to cook. They got an internship with a guy they probably shouldn't have, sent them into the forest to get the ooze. Uh, he successfully does it, but then accidentally po- makes the drink wrong, poisons a bunch of elites, get kicked out of so- has to flee society or die, probably ends up in the forest again where they get poisoned, but they get rescued by the wizard who had to use a magic spell that deep- does something to them. We haven't decided what, but something not great that they now have to deal with for all of eternity the guy kind of feels bad takes this kid under their wing decides you know what i'm gonna teach you magic as well let's go learn from the dragons but while interacting with the dragon somehow accidentally poisons them as well and then starts a rampage that could spot or the ooze death and sickness to the rest of the society the world if they don't stop it we could give them a few friends and just sort of spread the <laughs> unfortunate events amongst some of them. <laughs> we just made like the most unlucky person in just yeah. stories in general. That was not intentional. <laughs> I, I don't know. I kind of find it funny er, if it's just this one person who's just has the worst luck and it's kind of their fault and it's kind of not and they just don't know what to do about it no no we won't the mentor will not uh the the wizard mentor will be a better father figure than (laughs) arlo's dad i hate arlo's dad not that that's a high bar to to cross i dislike him greatly kids should not watch the good dinosaur they don't need that messaging in their life We'll have better messaging in this. Yeah, life sucks, but at least help the the main character will persevere and defeat the dragon and be seen as a hero, even though technically it's all their fault in the first place. And therefore, we'll be teaching kids to go ahead and make a really big mess as long as you're confident you can clean it up, and that's how you make a name for yourself. Yeah, I mean, you could also have it where <laughs> it's a great yes, message. you could also have it where um <laughs> the uh, the wizard. Uh, goes and uses magic to cure the protagonist which then um, somehow physically or mentally harms him and then because he feels bad about it he's like okay I'm going to take you under my wing and introduce you to the dragons and in the process uh, maybe I cannot use magic to heal you but you can use magic to heal yourself if you learn it because the idea is that the current is flowing the wrong direction when you are outputting magic into an individual but so long as you can output magic from yourself and have it of course thrown throughout your own body that could heal uh, that could be used to heal you but you cannot heal others and that's a better motivation actually yeah yeah that's a better motivation for the uh the wizard for like teaching he's like i've done this it was to save your life and now you're stuck like this, but I can teach you how to fit. It feels very- now we've got a Doctor Strange moment happening, but <laughs> you can cure yourself using your own magic within yourself. I like this idea. This is- this has a lot of potential like for a really interesting story. I like this story. I, I just love the idea of someone- the main goal in their life was to become a chef, and then somehow <laughs> they got thrown into this- <laughs> bizarre adventure full of pain, suffering, and sickness that was kind of just self-inflicted on themselves. At any point, they could have been like, you know what? I'm not doing that. No job is worth going into that forest. But they were like, nah, I'm gonna take this on. And they face the consequences. And then at the end of the story, he goes back home to open up his own little restaurant, and when he does, he creates just the greatest food and the greatest tasting beverages anyone has ever had. And they're all like, wow, how do you make a tasting good? And he's just like, oh, it's a secret ingredient and I will not tell you what it is. And what he's doing is he's sticking the ooze into the food and then casting a spell to nullify its effects. That's, that's actually, yeah, I bet, yeah, because the ooze makes things taste good, it just also kills you, but if you can leave the flavor, but remove the poisonous effects. That's so that's funny, like, ending. that's such a funny, like, little <laughs> end, it's just a funny end credit scene is where you have them doing the serves, and everyone's like, what your secret is, like, oh, we don't tell the secret, and then you just pan to the background, and the ominous music plays, and he just has a bucket of the ooze just sitting in the back of the restaurant. And then it ends, and people are like, oh, that could be a sequel. Or it could not. It could end there. Who knows? And then that's just Oh, I wasn't thinking ominous. I was thinking just more like a goofy, 
uh, it was sort of the like cheesy ending where he's just like, ah, I can't tell you no, what I put in your just... sandwich. And then he g- walks into the kitchen and then he makes another one where he just dumps in a little bit of ooze and casts a spell. <laughs> I, it's, I guess it depends how much of like the horror. Is this a horror comedy? Is that what this is turning into? I mean, maybe. A and fantasy if you, horror comedy? And if you want a sequel, you could have it be where he's got the ooze sort of, but then you've got maybe some sort of competitor, some sort of a rival to his business who says, he's making sandwiches that are too good and drinks that are too sweet or whatever. We need to figure out what his secret ingredient is. And then someone goes in, gets the ooze, and they start trying it, and then they start poisoning their customers. Uh... And now you've got a bunch of zombies or whatever, like, running rampant, and he's got to figure out how to fix this. But he can't... Yeah, he can't... Like, I bet with the dragons, he could use his magic because the dragons have strong enough magic that they could fix themselves, so it wasn't a big deal for... He just had to figure out how to get close enough to do the spell and learn the spell. But with people, you can't do that. So that's, like, a whole new element. Like, he actually has to figure out how to cure A whole lot of little And maybe that's a good lesson... Yeah, a good lesson of why you shouldn't use poisonous substances and not tell people that you're using deadly poisonous substances in your cooking. I want to know how many people... Might this is a lesson that how many people need to learn? I'm, I'm curious. Uh, too many. <laughs> ah. Like, you're like, oh yeah, this is a great Don't lesson. And I'm like, fish. I ah. n- have never known anyone who needed to learn that lesson. <laughs> Honestly, there might be people out there who need to know that lesson, and you know why we don't know that they need to know that lesson? It's because they need to learn that it's lesson. It's all the people whose secret ingredient in their food is pufferfish. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I... But the thing is, he knows... Look, the, the things that we he is the, the The main character, he knows how to remove the poison. He knows how to make it safe for human consumption. It's just that there was this one rando that ran in and stole his uh, his ooze and then started using it. Yeah. Yeah, well, he then has to deal with that. I don't know how you fix that. Like, how, I guess, other than the, the lily pads and... That seems more like a short. Like, you know, uh, it's after the Pixar movie and then they make a bunch of shorts based off of the movie. It's one of those. I feel like if you were to come up with some sort of alternate adventure or some sort of alternate cure or uh, uh, maybe make it a mystery of him trying to figure out who it is that stole the ooze or who it is that um, has been poisoning. Who yeah, it? It, it could easily turn into a mystery story. Yeah, go from horror comedy to mystery. Mm. Zombie mystery. Zombie mystery, horror comedy, ooze fest. <laughs> That's quite the story. Uh, do you have any anywhere else you want to go with this? Uh, no, I think that's it. I think we nailed this one. Yeah? I like it. It sounds like a, a fun, creepy, disturbing time. Yeah, I, I think it turned out well. We got a good story uh, premise out of it. We got a good world. Got... Uh, good setting, good character, good... You just Everything turned out really well, really easily with this yeah. one. Yeah, well, I, I guess we'll, we'll just end it there. Uh, yep. Just um, don't eat pufferfish. Bye, guys. <laughs> Goodbye, peoples. <laughs> <laughs>